So what I want to do here is have a discussion about Kamala Khan. And what I'm hoping is that at the end of this video, you'll have a strong understanding of her character, as well as the significance of her creation and introduction into the Marvel landscape. So Kamala Khan was created by editor Sana Amant, Stephen Wacker, Adrian Alfano, and writer G. Willow Wilson, and first appeared in Captain Marvel issues 14 and 17 as a background character in 2013. In an article written by the New York Times titled Mighty Muslim and Leaping Off the Page, Sana Amman had stated that the inspiration for the creation of Kamala came during a 2012 meeting with Stephen Wacker when she had made reference to an experience in her childhood growing up as a Muslim American. Initially, Wacker found the idea intriguing and in response, the two presented the idea to writer G. Willow Wilson. Because Wilson had established herself as an acclaimed writer with stories like the 2008 miniseries Vixen Return of the Lion, which focused on the return of Vixen as one of DC's first African superheroes, Marvel looked to Wilson who identified herself as Muslim as someone who could launch the series in a way that would bring in readers, but also respect the Muslim belief system within the pages of the comic. And to this end, with Miss Marvel No. 1 in 2014, Wilson set about writing Kamala Khan in a way that would establish her as a role model for young female readers by stepping away from the sexualizing of female characters and instead focus on her journey to become a hero, how her home life and family traditions impact her decision making, as well as providing the basis behind both the development of Khan's powers and her adoption of the Miss Marvel name. Introducing her family as being rooted in traditional Muslim beliefs, the story also established that Kamala lives in New Jersey. Now to be honest, for me, it's the small things that create a more well-rounded story in that because the Muslim belief system forbids the consumption or handling of pork, as a Pakistani American, Kamala has to deal with the wonderful smell of bacon and all of its complexity while being unable to eat it. In addition to this, Wilson incorporates the idea of the stereotypical American with the introduction of a character named Zoe. Now to be clear, this isn't really designed to insult us as readers, but instead serves the purpose of providing us with a view of Kamala's life in dealing with a girl from her local school. Where Zoe herself isn't being belligerent, in truth, she's actually a flake with an air of pompousness and akin to what we would view as an individual disconnected from reality, but attempting to solve the world's problems. To this end, her lack of culture regarding the customs of Kamala and her friend Kiki cause her to come off as rude when she refers to Kiki's hijab as a headscarf. Now to sidetrack for a second, Technically, Zoe isn't wrong by her description, but the hijab is very significant for Muslim women in that it signifies modesty and privacy. At the same time, Zoe asks the question whether or not Kiki would be killed for taking it off, which again signifies the fact that Kiki wearing the headdress is an issue of personal choice instead of societal pressure. From here, we pick up with Kamala and her love of superheroes. As one of the elements that drew so many fans directly to her, Kamala's love of superheroes has driven her to create fanfiction on forums regarding imaginative battles. In this instance, she's created a story involving Captain America, Iron Man, and Carol Danvers dealing with an evil space creature which has killed Rainbow Toots on Planet Unicorn. While we don't know much about Rainbow Toots, we can probably assume they were awesome, and as such, Carol Danvers, Captain America, and Iron Man deal some much deserved justice to the space creature by helping it to understand the significance of its mistake. However, before the story finishes, Kamala Khan is called away by her mother for dinner. At this point, the story shifts its focus to both Kamala's family as well as the struggles faced by young people. Again, to sidetrack for a second, in the teenage years of every generation, a kind of journey exists in their attempt to figure out who they are and define their identities. For some, this journey is one of isolation in that they become separated from their parents and only hang out with friends, and for others, it's literally bouncing between different sets of friends. Within Kamala's family, her brother Amir is searching for his identity by developing a religious perspective of Allah. In addition to this, the purpose of the back and forth as is presented here is to simply establish that regardless of the race or faith of a family's makeup, the internal struggles faced by established parents and their children's search for identity is universal and is really more of G. Willow Wilson's effort to remove perceived barriers regarding the differences between white and non-white families. And so with Kamala being told that she cannot attend a party held by some of her friends and the cooler kids in school, as she travels to her room, we get this really cool inner monologue. What we're told is that for Kamala, the struggle she faces is that as a Pakistani American, while her family is rather progressive, many of the traditional values regarding their Muslim belief system are still maintained. The result is that in a lot of ways, Kamala feels isolated from the rest of the world due to her inability to eat certain foods, attend the same classes, and enjoy the same holidays. As a result, and against the instructions of her father, she sneaks out of her home and attends the party. 
Now transitioning to the party itself, this is actually Kamala's first taste of experiencing what life is like from the perspective of what she considers to be a normal American. Now at the outset, the party seems pretty cool in that there's live music and dancing with all the cool kids hanging out and talking about the kinds of things they deem to be important. But within this story, the party provides us with the idea that it's actually a little more than Kamala bargained for. Because the Muslim belief system forbids the consumption of alcohol, the initial reaction of Kamala is one of surprise, but her friend Bruno also expresses anger in this. Now to be clear, Bruno himself is actually Italian-American, but because he and Kamala are friends, he also recognizes the importance of traditional values in Kamala's life and that despite her desire to fit in, there are also aspects of her heritage that she cannot walk away from. To this end, because there seemed to be a bed of sorts, or at the very least, some of the boys had taken joy in getting her to consume alcohol against her religious beliefs, Bruno guides her away once she realizes that she was more of a target of ridicule rather than someone people considered a friend. Now, something to also take note of here is that this point in Kamala's life actually takes place following the events of Infinity when Black Bolt had detonated the Terrigen Bomb during his battle with Thanos. The result is that the Terrigen Cloud has begun to spread throughout the world and has finally made its way to New York and New Jersey. Following this, we pick up with Kamala after succumbing to the Terrigen Mists and experiencing a kind of surreal dream sequence of sorts. Now on its face, if you're unaware of the Muslim culture, this particular scene may come across as more nonsensical than anything else, but in truth, it's actually a tribute of sorts. The words that Carol Danvers is reciting are from a poem by a man named Amir Khusro, focusing on the beauty of the spring season and a way to respect God. Within the context of the story, the purpose of this moment is to signify Kamala transitioning to a new stage of existence, but to also allow us as the reader a glimpse into the beauty of her culture and its celebration of life. In addition to this, where the words of Danvers, Rogers and Stark tell Kamala that she's standing at a crossroads and that where her actions of betraying the wishes of her parents and attending the party were her attempt at gaining social acceptance, instead, it resulted in her being made fun of. What this means is that the heroes she sees in her dream aren't there to sway her away from attempting to mingle with American society and instead are there to help her understand her place in the world and the road she needs to take to find it. To this end, where Kamala remains staunch in the face of the fact that she's not averse to the teachings of her parents but doesn't wish to follow them since she doesn't see herself hailing from that society, the question is asked about who she wants to be. Stating that her desire is to be a superhero like Danvers, Rogers, and Iron Man, She's informed that she'll be granted her request, but that things won't necessarily turn out the way she hopes. Now regarding the bigger picture of Marvel Comics and the Inhumans, the cool thing about the entire sequence Kamala's just experienced is that it all took place during her metamorphosis within the cocoon formed by the mists. What this seems to tell us is that when an Inhuman undergoes pterogenesis, rather than experiencing the mists and suddenly changing, a kind of journey takes place within their own mind to help ease the transition to their new form. Now, I won't swear to this since Kamala's transition is really the only time we've ever seen the change from within the mind of a character, and there have been several instances where individuals emerge from pterogenesis unaware of what's happening. But regardless, as the story comes to a close, when Kamala emerges from her transformation, she's physically identical to Carol Danvers. Now, following issue number one and the introduction of Kamala Khan, G. Willow Wilson actually had her work cut out for her. What I mean here is that where Miss Marvel was initially released as a monthly series, between January of 2014 and the start of Secret Wars in May of 2015, the sales of her comics continually dropped, holding steady at around 30,000 sales each month. However, the reason for this wasn't really due to a lack of storytelling, but the fact that the early days of Kamala's publications weren't the best for mainstream fans to gain exposure to new creations. What I mean here is that in her first month, Kamala Khan was competing with Scott Snyder's Batman, Jeff Johns' Justice League, Dan Slott's Superior Spider-Man, and Hickman's lead-up to Secret Wars in Avengers and New Avengers. However, within her own story and the remaining four issues of the five-part series, Wilson set about three main tasks. Provide a depiction of how Kamala's world has changed following the development of her inhuman powers, introduce a villain, and allow Kamala to come into her own and become a heroine all to herself. To the first, with issue number two, it was established that Kamala's inhuman genome allowed for a combination of powers which were identical to Reed Richards, Mystique, and Hank Pym. Now to be clear, it's not that the powers of all three were secretly planted in her, it's simply that her inhuman genome works out that way. As a result, she can shapeshift and take on the form of others, albeit without copying their powers, but also extend and control the size of her limbs as well as shrink down to smaller sizes. 
However, despite her inner struggle and the belief that she can't grasp everything that's going on, at the same time, Zoe's being accosted by Josh, who has since become intoxicated by his alcohol consumption. As a result, where he doesn't indicate the intention of sexually assaulting Zoe, in his drunken state, he seems to have begun to get carried away with himself, accidentally knocking Zoe into the water. Now, with Kamala witnessing the incident, her struggle begins to clear up when she references a story her father told her as a child. What we're told is that one of the core tenets of the Muslim Islamic belief system is a oneness with all humanity by way of Allah. As a result, if a criminal commits a crime, it's a crime against Allah and all of humanity. Likewise, if a person saves a life, they enhance their ties to Allah and save mankind. Using this as a basis, Kamala references her childhood in stating that this belief coupled with her view of the world is what led to her love for superheroes. Where normal humans may or may not have jumped in to save the day, superheroes of the Marvel Universe like Captain America, Iron Man, and others always jumped in without question, even if the battle would mean the end of their own lives. Now this particular bit is extremely important in that not only does it serve as a cornerstone of Kamala's religious faith, but it also stands as a basis behind her decision to become a hero. To this end, she's able to control her power in the context of the situation and rescue Zoe from drowning. Having said that, to the second task, within these first five issues, Wilson had begun to focus on the development of a core villain for Kamala to face within her own comics. The reason why is because the success and popularity of heroes is defined by the growth of their personalities under themselves regarding coming into their own as heroes, but also due to a rogues gallery which can be used for the purpose to enhance the heroes themselves, but also create more compelling stories. In addition to this, the nature of the villain has to match the hero, meaning that for Kamala, it wouldn't make any sense to have her face off against someone capable of warping reality. Instead, she would need someone to complement her powers, but who could also present a challenge. And to this end, in issues 3, 4, and 5, Wilson maintained Kamala's hero worship of Carol Danvers, but also combined it with her desire to become her own hero. As a result, during a visit to her friend Bruno at his deli, she unwittingly walked in on a robbery taking place. Now the initial intention of Kamala is to alert the authorities to what's happening, but because her phones died, the only options available to her are to either allow the robbery to take place, or to intervene and stop it. Choosing the latter, when she makes herself known, she actually appears in the form of Carol Danvers. Using her powers of molecular manipulation and quite literally smashing the cashier's desk, her first act in going against the armed criminal actually isn't that bad. Something that's also interesting here is that during her attempt to stop the robbery, she actually celebrates her actions and that for Kamala, she feels as though her life finally has purpose. Now the reason why I like this is because it's not something we normally see from superheroes. Throughout both Marvel and DC, as well as other publishers including Valiant, it's usually a kind of unwritten understanding that heroes come into their own and oftentimes it takes place off panel. With Steve Rogers for example, one day he was a sickly human being and within the same day, he was at the peak of human conditioning. Whereas early stories in the 1940s and his role in the Avengers in the 1960s saw him battling the forces of evil, there wasn't much emphasis on him coming to grips with his new abilities. But transitioning back to our story, in the midst of her attempts to subdue the criminal, Kamala Khan is actually shot through the stomach. Now the importance of this is that it allowed Wilson to move Bruno into the realm of a sidekick of sorts and that when he calls for help from emergency services in an effort to rescue who he believes to be Carol Danvers, Kamala reveals her identity to Bruno, telling him who she truly is. Now again, this is all part of the larger picture regarding Wilson tying Kamala in to most of the superhero archetypes that exist at the time. What I mean here is that if we took Batman for an example, a staple of his existence is that Alfred is well aware of Bruce's escapades as a Cape Crusader and even helps him to achieve his goals. Regarding the bigger picture of Kamala's first villain, this goes towards the idea that Kamala herself would have some measure of an ally against the various foes that she would have to cope with. And so following this, where the next issue and a half focus on Kamala and Bruno tracking down the robber who was revealed to be Bruno's younger brother named Vic, Kamala's first villain in the form of Inventor was revealed in the final page of issue number 5 as a man named Thomas Edison. Now where issues 7 through 11 would explain that the Inventor is the result of a man named Knox cloning the original Thomas Edison who had created the light bulb by way of Tesla. During the cloning process, Knox's pet bird had become mingled in the cloning procedure, causing Edison to be cloned as a human-avian hybrid. However, despite these early attempts to establish Kamala as a strong female character, her stories didn't quite gain the following that both Marvel and Wilson were looking for and that her publications continually slumped in sales. 
looking to the Avengers and other teams as a way to boost the popularity of Kamala's character. With issue number 6 and number 7, as well as 10 and 11, Wilson introduced several team-ups with Wolverine, the Inhumans, and even Loki of Asgard. Where the purpose of these was to provide a larger picture regarding the various schemes that the inventor had implemented in attempting to see if it was possible to get people to act against their own best interests. In truth, it wasn't so much the team-ups that piqued the interest of fans as much as it was Kamala's interest in seeing these various individuals. With Wolverine, for example, because he was such a well-known hero in the superhero community, albeit with an anti-hero stance, he had been a major source of Kamala's fan fiction in relation to Storm, and so for her, meeting Wolverine was tantamount to one of us meeting a celebrity we had spent most of our lives idolizing. With the Inhumans, the meeting between Medusa and Kamala is educational and that Kamala was informed that unlike Wolverine's speculations, she's not a mutant and instead is an Inhuman. Now this particular bit is important in that Kamala didn't know about the Terrigen Cloud spreading across the world and had simply attributed the mist to some sort of weird phenomenon that resulted in her gaining abilities. Furthermore, the education came with a caveat in that where Kamala possessed the power to heal and shapeshift, the more she heals from injuries, the less she's able to shapeshift. However, despite these interesting team-ups and these concepts, the problem that Wilson and fans faced was that Secret Wars and all new all different Marvel was lingering on the horizon, meaning that almost all information regarding Kamala, her abilities, how they worked, and who her allies were, had to be crammed into a small number of comics in a short amount of time. Having said that, where Kamala's first volume technically lasted 19 issues, the final four issues of the series were part of the Last Days line, which saw Danvers and Khan teaming up, leading into the collapse of the multiverse. Now the importance of Kamala and Carol teaming up is something that cannot be overlooked. To be honest, for me, it felt like the entire series of stories as they were released under the banner of Miss Marvel Volume 3 had all been leading up to this point, the reason being because this team up was just as much a reflection of Kamala idolizing Carol Danvers as it was a reflection of women in comics. What I mean here is that as the publications of Kamala progressed, the idea behind it was to create a character who was Pakistani American and a woman which would go on to empower young girls and provide a place for them among the pantheon of male heroes. In addition to this, for both Kamala and Carol Danvers fans, the Last Days comics were a passing of the torch so to speak in that there had never been an instance in Kamala's stories where she had officially received the blessing of Carol in undertaking the mantle of Miss Marvel and operating accordingly. Where some of the more die-hard fans of Carol Danvers weren't necessarily pleased to see this happen, for a large majority of Marvel readers, even if it wasn't the most important of events to take place considering everything that was going on at the time, I always felt like it was a significant moment for Kamala herself. Now to focus on this for a bit, when it comes to women in comics, there's only a handful in Marvel that have actually stood the test of time as being unshakable members of the superhero community. As one of the first major heroines to receive her own series, Carol Danvers stands atop the list alongside Aurora Monroe and Susan Storm. As such, Carol had played a major role for young female readers looking to get into comics and in that they had a hero of sorts that they could call their own. And so much like these young girls, Kamala Khan reflected this desire for a hero to idolize and found it in Carol. However, because the collapse of the multiverse and all things within was imminent, this team-up wasn't so much about Kamala and Danvers fighting villains together as much as it was about fans of Kamala receiving the comic they had been waiting for, but also Wilson providing us with a view of Kamala receiving her one big wish of fighting alongside Danvers, even if only for a moment. Now having said all that, once all new all different Marvel started, like most of Marvel's lineup, the stories of Kamala took place 8 months after the end of Secret Wars, with no information regarding what took place during that time. As a result, there's not much to offer here in terms of a discussion since we're only a few issues in. However, there are some things we can talk about. With issue number one and with G. Willow Wilson returning to the title as writer, Kamala was introduced as being part of the all new all different Avengers led by Sam Wilson and operating alongside Tony Stark, Sam Alexander, Jane Foster, Vision, and Miles Morales. In addition to this, where Bruno had confessed his love to Kamala during the final issues of Miss Marvel Volume 3 but was rejected, the sentiment seems to remain the same in that Kamala still desires to focus solely on her role as a hero, sparing little time for anything else. Simultaneously, Wilson elected to broaden the character of Bruno by moving him from the friend and sidekick harboring an unrequited love to a man that has since moved on and found his own romance with a woman named Michaela Miller. But again, because we're only two issues in, there's really not much to offer besides this. But if you are currently reading Kamala Khan or if you're on the fence about it, 
then post a comment below and let me know what you think so far. And with that being said, we're going to bring this video to an end, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.